On today's show, we get you caught up on week one of A-Sun Hoops. Plus, we hear what head coach Hugh Freeze has to say about the future of Flames football. Plus, Rhett is heating up for the first warm, hot, and fuego of 2021. You don't want to miss it. This is Flames Central. Hey, what's up? Welcome to a brand new Flame Central. She's Emily. I'm Matt. We're coming to you today from the beautiful Williams Stadium, the site of a memorable and historic season for Liberty football. To say the least, Matt, a 10 and one season after that unbelievable finish against Coastal Carolina to secure the back to back yeah. victories of the Cure Bowl championships. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get to the gridiron in just a minute. That's right. Let's start on the hardwood where Liberty men's basketball kicked off the new year and a sun play on the road. The Flames traveling to face Lipscomb in back-to-back -back games. Remember this year the schedule is all back-to-backs and in game one things didn't start well for the red, white, and blue. Liberty didn't score for the first three minutes of the ball game as they fell behind 8-0 right out of the gate. It would allow the Bisons to shoot 55% from the field in the first half as Lipscomb led 42-39 at the break. Second half, the Flames did show some signs of life, cutting the deficit to just three, but it wouldn't be enough. They fall 77 to 70. The great news is that they would get another chance the very next day, and the Flames took full advantage. This time, it was Liberty building an early lead as Kyle Rhodes scored nine points before the break, leading to a 30-20 lead at the half. Then Darius McGee heated up, scoring eight points in the first 315 of the second half, and it was all over. The Flames bounced back with a 66-50 win and learn from that loss in the process. I think all of us took it very personal. Like the guys were able to see yesterday what it's like when we don't do what we do every day and be ourselves. So we definitely yesterday, last night, we talked as a team and wanted to make that difference. And I think tonight the guys see what it's like for us to click on all cylinders and give them much more effort. And it's gonna take that effort every single game. We have a really mature group and guys like Cuff, D, uh, Keys, and all those guys did a really good job, including myself. Just, just really making sure we're all on the same page today, um, and come back. We knew, we knew we could, we could play better than what we did yesterday, especially at the start. So we just wanted to put a good 40 minutes together, and uh, that's the standard for us. Great to see the guys bounce back in Nashville. On the ladies' side, Liberty stayed right here in Lynchburg to open up a Sun play, hosting Libscomb. Going into this game, the Lady Flames had not played a game in 17 days due to COVID-19 cancellations. So you might assume Liberty would need to knock off some rust. Not the case. Emily Lytle continued her sharp shooting. She finished the game with 10 points. Maya Berkman really got things going inside for the Lady Flames. She added 18. It was a Liberty by a land slide at the half, but leave it to downtown D Brown for banking in the half court shot at the buzzer. She recorded an efficient 13 points off the bench. Libscum attempted 39 three pointers in this game, only made 10 of them. That was reflected in the score. Liberty takes it 88 59, but the Lady Bisons would write a different script in game two. Casey Collier and Taylor Clark exploded for a combined 44 points, but Liberty's Ashton Baker took it to another level. Fast forward to the final six seconds of regulation tie ball game. Baker drains the jumper to give Liberty a two point lead, but Michaela Kessner fouls and it's off to overtime. Liberty outscores the Lady Bisons 13 to three in OT to get the sweep. Baker finished with a game high 27. Here's the senior after the game. Well, it's a huge team win. Um, I'm super proud of the team for the way we came together in overtime. And I mean, 13 to three, that's huge. I'm so proud of our players. We persevered. Um, they, they made a big run. Uh, we started off slow, but uh, we stuck together. We stayed with our principles. Our goal was more of a mental aspect today, just playing back to back. You know, we had some slip ups, but uh, our girls were resilient. I'm very proud of our girls. They stuck together. All right, let's talk some football now. I don't think even the most optimistic Flames fan could have predicted what happened in 2020. A 9-1 regular season record, wins over Virginia Tech and Syracuse, a top 25 ranking, oh yeah, and then a bowl game against an arch rival. It was all too perfect. Not to mention how Liberty would defeat Coastal Carolina in the Cure Bowl, a fumble in the final moments of regulation, an overtime game, and then a blocked field goal to secure the victory. This game had all the twists and turns of a mystery novel, 
or one of those romance novels Rhett reads. And yet, at the end of the day, the Flames were the ones standing with the trophy. The second straight year, Liberty has won the Cure Bowl, but how do they follow up this season? What's the next step for a program that suddenly finds itself with these elevated expectations? Well, on a soon-to-be-released Flame Central podcast, we ask head coach Hugh Freeze that very question. Everywhere I've been, we've been able to to turn it pretty quick, and and all of a sudden I was on, uh, reading stuff the other day, and I mean it's just you know, everybody well, well twelve and oh, well, it's just you know here is the 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 goal for us, it is to be competitive in every game. Are we going to win all of them? No. I mean look at our schedules, um, but man, I do expect us to be competitive. And would be very disappointed if we're not competitive. And there may be some power five sometimes that you know, you catch the wrong one on the wrong year, and they just their roster is just so much better that you know you you can get smacked around a little bit. But I don't think that's going to be many times. I, I'm hopeful it's not. As a Liberty fan, man, if I've got a competitive team in FBS that's going to bowl games year in year out, that to me is uh, people should enjoy that. If you want to hear more of our interview with Coach Freeze, as well as the best Flames coverage you can possibly acquire for free, well, if I got great news for you. You need to check out our new Flame Central podcast. Each week, Emily, Rhett, and I go in-depth on all things Liberty Athletics. We bring in special guests, we make bold predictions, and we generally have a great time. You can find the Flame Central podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, basically anywhere great podcasts can be found. Be sure to check it out. Well, we talk a lot about the Flames' success on our podcast, and it's not like they're slowing down with who they have returning and also who they're adding. No doubt about it, Matt. For the second straight year, Coach Freeze and his staff making history once again, bringing in the best recruiting class in program history. Let's take a look at some of those names. Matt, these are just guys rated as three-star recruits. According to 24-7, there's much more. On oh, yeah, the there's a lot more guys that are going to be playmakers that aren't listed here. But take note of the top of the list. Christian Zachary, a defensive lineman. He is the top-rated recruit in Liberty football history. He is going to be fun to watch when he gets on campus. Freeze has said time and time again, the game is won in the trenches, yeah. and it looks like that was the focus and reloading on the line as well as some key additions on the defensive side of the ball. Not to mention, a number of these guys are going to be early enrollees, so they're going to get a head start in this program and be ready to rock when 2021 comes around. Can't wait. Well, Matt, during football season, we introduced a new segment called Hot Seat. Yeah. We interrogated the players of the most important life questions and let me just tell you, the videos, they were a hit. So yeah. we decided to continue that with men's basketball. I know this question has been burning in your mind all year long. Who takes the most selfies on the men's basketball team? The teammate that takes the most selfies, I'm probably going with Darius. Probably Darius. He's always he's always snapping some picks. So. Teammate that takes the most selfies would probably be Elijah Cuffey. Darius probably takes the most selfies on our team. Darius posts a ton of uh, Snapchat stories, like of himself. Definitely the most annoying person to follow on Snapchat. I actually muted him last week. Either Drake, because his snap score is ridiculously high, or Martin. I usually catch Martin taking a lot of selfies, so. For that one, definitely got to go with Darius. If you check his Snapchat, I mean, it's it's nonstop. <laughs> I try to plug him right now, D McGee too, I think, but uh, he definitely takes the most selfies. Everybody say that just because I'm like the most active probably on social media, but no. I've seen one, he's laying in the bed and he's just like. Not only does he take the most, he also saves them all to his camera roll and posts them on a story about six or seven times each month. It's bad. It's, for, for a grown man, you shouldn't be doing stuff like that. I don't know if Darius is too worried about his looks. I think he's just, I, I don't know, I think he just likes taking selfies just to take them. I try to tell him. Me and Martin always try to tell him. It's disappointing. I'll give you one guess which of the two of us takes more selfies. And it's not me. You she's on lying. This, and she's on Instagram this, all the time, which she really should year, be working. Really shouldn't be lying. All right, time now for one of our favorite segments on the show. It's the top five plays of the month. Yeah, December had more highlights than just Christmas, and we selected the best of the best, starting with play number five. We don't often feature free throws on the top five of the month, and by not often, I mean never. But this is deserving. Emily Lytle set a program record making 27 straight free throws, which the record setter coming against Carson Newman. She passes Jamie Fisher Davis for the most consecutive made free throws in Lady Flames history. Congrats to her. We stay with the Lady Flames. And later in the same game, Ashton Baker showing off the range. 
a deep buzzer beater at the end of the third quarter. Baker shooting over 40% from beyond the arc this season. Most of them closer than that. LU would make a record 14 threes in this game. None as dramatic as that one. So you thought that was a nice buzzer I beater. I present to you, drum roll please, Drake Dobbs. This was in the Flames' first home game of the season, and it was also his first collegiate three-pointer. You think he'll remember that one, I Matt? I think so, yes. I know he will. The Flames would go on to roll St. Francis in this ballgame, 78-62. Number two, we stay with the Flames in another freshman, Micaiah Abi, the big fella with the thunderous dunk against Bluefield College. Abi has made some spectacular plays this season, none better than this throw down. That dunk, the exclamation point on a blowout win for the Flames over the Bluefield Rams. All right, play number one. One. Is there any doubt? Is there any doubt? The Cure Bowl overtime, Coastal Carolina to tie it up. But Elijah James says, not today, Matt Warner. The Flames win their second straight Cure Bowl, defeating Coastal in a dramatic fashion, 37-34. It was sweet because it was a bowl victory. Yes. It was extra sweet because it was against a bitter Absolutely. rival. Liberty closes out the 2020 season with a win and a 10-1 record in just its second season of FBS football. Coming up, the story of a former Liberty basketball player turned inventor. Plus, Rhett joins us with the first warm, hot, and fuego of the new year. That's when Flame Central returns. What are the moments that stick with you? The ones that take your breath away. Sometimes you find them when you least expect them. You just need the opportunities to pursue. At Liberty University, you can earn a world-class degree and alongside, walk away with memories and experiences that will last a lifetime for all your passions and interests. So what is your dream? Liberty University can ignite it, and your outcome will change the world. In 1776, one of the most important documents in our nation's history was penned by one of Virginia's most famous residents. Throughout the next 200 years, the importance of Central Virginia was deeply woven into the tapestry of our nation's history. Liberty University is blessed to be built upon these same historic grounds, furthering the Christian tradition of our founding fathers and training young men and women of character and of calling. At Liberty, you're welcomed into a community rich with history and we invite you to explore our campus in Central Virginia to discover more than just the surface level. Building upon the tapestry of history, we strive for greatness, humble to be at the heart of where the country began. Service, integrity, honor. You lead your career with these virtues. Now lead your field with the degree you want at a price you've earned. Maximize your benefits at Liberty University and pay just $250 per hour for undergraduate or $275 to $300 per hour for graduate and doctoral degrees. For over 30 years, Liberty has supported military families by offering low tuition and generous benefits because integrity to us means honoring your service now and always. Welcome to Liberty University's online programs. We're living out your calling with integrity is what you train to do. And getting ready for the future doesn't mean missing out on the now. Because a university is more than buildings and books. And an education should set you free, not fence you in. Welcome to Liberty's global campus, where distance learning was pioneered and evolved into one of the top ranked schools in the nation. We're protecting your budget your time and your education isn't just a theory, it's our priority. Here, degrees in your field reflect industry demands and help get you ahead of the competition. Where college comes to you, but you can come to college too. Game day, homecoming, graduation day, your school, your values, your experience, your choice. Welcome to Liberty University where we train champions for Christ. Welcome back.
Sometimes the best opportunities in life come from the biggest setbacks. That was the case for former LU basketball player Stefan Leary, who used his time wisely after being sidelined from injury. An idea turned into an invention, which could eventually help those on and off the hardwood. Stefan Leary played basketball at Liberty University in the late 1980s, but when his career was cut short due to injuries, then head coach Jeff Meyer offered him a position as a student assistant coach. My assignment was skill work, overseeing the weight training, and just helping guys out with shooting and dribbling, uh, you know, that needed help. And so some of the guys that played at that time, we, you know, I spent time after practice, you know, just working with those guys, helping them get better. After graduation, Stefan pursued playing and coaching opportunities for several years before returning to his hometown of Houston, where, building on what he learned at Liberty, he began a training facility for athletes. It was here that an NBA agent friend of his asked him for a favor, and that started Stefan on a journey he could have never envisioned. He had a kid, seven foot five guy, coming from Senegal. And he said to me, uh, he said, I heard he's a little rough around the edges. We need to get him ready for the Mavericks in uh, two weeks. I get him in the gym and I, and, I, and I use three things that I thought would help him get quicker, more explosive, faster. I took the jump sole, which was a utility shoe that you put your foot in and elevate your foot off the ground. I took the oldest thing that everybody was using back in the day, which was ankle weights. And then I took a stretchy band and to work on hip flexors and stretch flexibility, stretchy abduction and adduction movement. And so I take all of these things and I put them on him individually. And uh, he was making progress, but I, I wanted to see more. And crunch time was coming. I say, I gotta get this kid ready. I said, you know what? I want you to put all three of those things on at the same time. And so he puts all three of them on at the same time. And I look at it for a second. I was like, that looks like a boot. <laughs> After that workout, he said, he say, coach, what did you do to me? I said, what do you mean? I said, we worked out. And he said, no, no. What did you do to me? He said, I hurt, but I feel good. It's a good hurt. And I start thinking to myself, hmm. I think I got something right here, right? I'm going to start using this training concept and see where it takes me. Where it took him was right back to Liberty University. 2016 rolls around and I hear Liberty's got a new engineer in school and things like that. So I said, you know, I just need some direction with this thing. I found out that Liberty offers a capstone uh, project, which means they bring in outside ideas and they try to create them for you. So uh, they accepted my, uh, my idea into the Capstone Project, and they produced for me uh, a 3D model of what the possibility was. I took the 3D model, and I took it to uh, a patent attorney, and I go through this process of getting the patent. 2018, I got a patent from the United States of America. Stefan thought that he had simply developed a new training technique for athletes. But as he was promoting his invention, one conversation introduced him to the idea that he might have designed something beneficial to those outside of sports. I started to really think about the possibilities of rehabilitation when I had a marketing guy that I visited with that I showed him the concepts and his wife had just went under stroke and he said, you know what? He said, those elements that you're using are the three elements in which they're telling me uh, my wife will need if she'll ever walk again. And I said, wow, really? And so my mind started, you know, spinning in that direction of what the possibility was, you know, medically. I would love to see this shoe help those rehabilitate, uh, to be able to walk, run, jump, do whatever again because I know what that was like when I had knee surgeries. And as this invention continues to move towards production, Stefan is grateful for his journey and the way that the Lord continues to use him. I can only sit here before you and tell you it's, it's God, man. It's God in me. Everything that God has done in my life, I feel fortunate and blessed that he has been able to use me in such a way. It's great getting to talk to Stefan Leary, excited for him to launch 
his new product. All right, big fella, Brett McGibbon joins us now for Warm Hot and Fuego, the yeah. first Warm Hot and Fuego of the new year. Right? That's true. With big expectations there, here. There are. Don't yeah. let us down. All right. All right. What, do we have a theme? What are we doing this no week? No theme. We're just we're getting right into it. A okay. lot of it's Cure Bowl related. Oh, really? Starting okay. off with Warm. This is a moment in this game that I thought put Malik Willis in a position to succeed. And it was a moment right after he got caged, right? Oh, yeah. Gunter comes in big number 94 on Teal Team 6, rips him down <laughs> to the ground, takes him down, and like Malik basically gets his head twisted yeah, off. Yeah. And then my boy Sergeant and Frith immediately are right in the guy's face yapping at him. And here's the deal. Gunter went after Zach Wilson at BYU. That's right. Like, they, they slammed a, him they down. They have a reputation. Oh, they do. They do. They got those mullets. They get a little know, gritty down there do, in, yeah. Yeah, in South Carolina. But I love the fact that the Liberty Center and Frith not weight doesn't weigh that much. He's pretty right. tall, but he comes in and throws a body. The fact that they got right in his face, I think it allowed Willis to play without fear throughout the rest of the game. He goes on. We know he has a record day. They had his back, and the Flames yes. go on and get the W. All That's right, huge. from warm we go to hot. What's your choice here? Yeah, hot Ashton Baker. She had yeah. just a tremendous performance, and I don't know if she's necessarily the most skilled player on the women's basketball team, but I do think she's the most important. When it comes down to clutch time, we have seen her time and time again either get the Flames going with a big basket, a big three. She fires it up with the passion. We saw her that hits the basket that puts Liberty in the lead. Thought they were going to win the game, but it ends up going to overtime, where again, she still produces yeah. a Sun Player of the Week. The senior point guard, so good when it comes to just controlling the pace of the game. A floor general. You know, yeah. we always hear you want a floor general. She has just been the coach's best friend out there so far this season. And the great news is you probably could have her back for another year, depending on her decision. So she has been just fantastic so far. Is it too much to say she may go down? as one of the great guards in program history. Oh, I think no doubt in my mind that she will be. Fantastic yeah. career so far. Yes. All right, finally in Fuego, Rhett. We're freezing out here, yeah. so what do you got? <laughs> Let's see if I can warm yeah, us warm up a it little up. bit. Malik Willis and just the Cure Bowl. Cure Bowl MVP. And what a season this guy had. And I think in that game, I give him a lot of credit because like we, we just talked about earlier on, they were going after him a little it's bit. physical. They wanted to rough him up, and that was a smart game plan by Coastal Carolina. But the fact is, kept his head up. I think he was pretty smart with his passes. I know he had a pick, but they played to his strengths. He wasn't afraid to take some contact and abuse getting into the end zone. Had a couple great plays, especially the third touchdown. Yeah. Had the stiff arm, got the guy in the mask, and he was away to the races. And just how much he developed and grew this year to be the MVP of that game. And in a game where, you know, if you're watching the Zach Wilson highlights, you're thinking as a quarterback, okay, these guys are going to be after yeah. me. You might be a little bit timid. Not the case. And then you see videos of him already on social media. He's out. He's getting ready yeah, for 2021. He's already getting ready out there with a QB development trainer. So just a fantastic year in game by him. Sky is the limit. Can't yes, wait to see him come sure. back again next season. Rhett, great job by you. you. Go get warm. Hey, still to come on Flame Central, one last look at the Flames fantasy football oh standings, boy. as well as one final look at that Cure Bowl Rep was just telling us about. We'll be right back on Flames Central. What is your dream, your calling? At Liberty University, we want to empower you through every chapter of your story. Here, you'll have opportunities to practice and excel across different fields. And that doesn't just end at the classroom door. At Liberty, we unite through Christ to pursue things larger than ourselves because in Him, we are able. So, what is your calling? Liberty University can ignite it, and your outcome will change the world. Since 1971, Liberty University has had one mission, training champions for Christ. We've been at this for a while, and in the shadow of the Blue Ridge Mountains, we have grown to be a global force. Today, Liberty runs over 100,000 students around the globe, studying across 15 colleges and schools. 
and among that, proudly over 30,000 military students and their families. Across 700 programs of study, we train as one, nurses, artists, business leaders of the future and today. Together, we work to give back through service trips, local community work, and over 500,000 volunteer hours per year. And we play just as hard as we study with 20 NCAA athletic programs and over 40 club sports teams. So who are we? We are Liberty University and we train champions for Christ. Welcome back to Flame Central. If you've been watching the show, you know this year we did our first ever Flames football fantasy draft. We each drafted five players. We've been tracking it throughout the season, and now we know the results. AKA, this is the part of the show where Matt Warner talks about his amazing comeback and how we need a Flames. I get to gloat. Yeah, fantasy draft hall of fame and needs yeah. to be named after him. This is basically that part of the show. Absolutely. So the whole I appreciate that. Yeah, I trailed so badly early in the year, but look at the totals here. Come from behind win, I win, I come back and beat Joe Yock, which he still hasn't talked to me since this happened. Uh, Emily, you finished a respectable third. As Brett long McGibbon. as I beat Brett. Brett right? has formed kind of a tradition in fantasy leagues of finishing in last place, unfortunately. And he, he, you know. He tries. He really does. His kids know that it's just pretty embarrassing. It is. Right? Sorry, Red. Well, thanks so much for joining us for this edition of Flames Central. You can check out more LibertyFlames.com. Be sure you check on the Liberty Flames Central tab and check out our podcast. That's right. But before we go, we leave you now with one last look at the Cure Bowl, some behind-the-scenes footage, fan reaction, a game that Flames fans will never forget. We hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you right back here next week. Oh I got to ask you to do two things. Give me all you got and do it 60 minutes. That's it. That's it. You got a chance tonight on national TV in front of millions and millions. Hey, it's all right. Willis. Into the end zone. Right up the wall. Came in and down he goes. Darrell Johnson's had himself quite a first half. Oh, he didn't get there. And the Flames stop on fourth and two and get the ball. And Willis rolls out, passes, caught, stubs, has it. Good call. Picked off by the flag and Scruggs is in midfield on his feet. Rolls right, has room to run. Touchdown, Liberty! Liberty leads now 37 34. Or if it's no good, Liberty wins. Snap, spot. Go up! It's blown! The Flames have yeah. won! The Flames have won! Block kick! And Liberty celebrates in Orlando! 37 34! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>